Hey, Evro Games, you traders. This is Mark. So jobs number came out at 1.30, weak jobs number. Um, so they're expecting Yellen not to raise rates. But let's talk about some levels and some trades. You know what? The first trade I did was absolutely abysmal. Um, I talked about keeping an eye on the US dollar yen, the DAX, possibly uh, the pound. So really, uh, I was focused mostly on the yen and mostly on the DAX. Well, the first mistake I think I made is obviously look at the FTSE. The FTSE just flew. That was the one to really be focused on, but it just wasn't on my watch list at all. Wasn't interested in it. Um, so I didn't want to flick to it when I saw it was moving and suddenly start to try and focus on it. Uh, that's a recipe for disaster for me. But anyway, talking about disasters, well, not really a disaster, but first trade of the day, and actually for a while, um, I was a short on the yen. The yen was just pushing lower. I thought it was pushing lower just before the report came out. Report came out, continued to push lower. And, you know, I jumped on it a bit too soon. I don't know really why I did that. I was... I was looking at this longer term, the downtrend, and thinking, you know, we're at a resistance level. I still think we're going to go back and kiss that 100. And I let that sort of cloud my bias a bit. And I think maybe a little fear of missing out came in. And I dived uh, in far too soon on that, really, when there wasn't uh, there wasn't a trade to be had. Um, it was breaking that 103, and I thought it was going to be good for a, you know, a good run. Uh, and it just it just basically just flew through one of three and then just ripped straight back up and, and took me for a stop. So first one was a was a bad trade. So, you know, when that happens, it's kind of a case of, you know, take stock of the situation, say, OK, that's an error. You dived in too early in that. Let's just reassess. Let the market settle down and then let's see exactly what it wants to do and see if we can get a setup from that. So, you know, sat back. Of course, when you see it rolling back again, you start to think, OK, uh, it was right, it's gone without me. But you know what? The beginner mistake at that point is to dive in short when you break under that. And you know what? I've, I've been in the in this, done that too many times in my early days not to get involved in trading stuff like that. So I said, you know what? Let's just wait. Give it 15 minutes to settle down. Give it 30 minutes, whatever it needs. Let's just see what's going on. So I'm scanning the DAX, I'm scanning the Dow. Uh, I'm looking over. I'm thinking, okay, footsie's moving. I should have been on that. Never mind. Keep focused on the yen. And let's see if there's an opportunity on there. And actually, you know, that paid dividends for me in the end because as we started to push out uh, and just just to really start to push and look really good. And, it, and, I, and because of the first trade was such a, a bad trade and not in case of a, in terms of a stop out, but in terms of just jumping the gun a little bit rather than waiting for the pullback and making a little scalp short or whatever, uh, or waiting for some sort of multiple move to the downside and then jumping on the pullback. I chased it and I got punished for it. And I, I sort of thought, well, that's a bit of a mistake. Let's just take stock of the situation. So anyway, long story short, it, it turned out to be a, an okay day for me. Not blinding, but it was okay. Um, and, and when I started to get involved was when I saw us flagging at the highs. You know, we'd, we'd push lower, sucked in loads of people on the short. Uh, we'd push then back through the prior high the pre-jobs high, held that after a retest. So now I'm thinking long, 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 long. Let me see, I want to get long. I was a bit cautious about the volatility dying down. As I mentioned in the last video, that's also a bit of a gotcha. But um, so I was thinking, I just want to see it break and hold, break and hold levels. I know my key levels up here at 104, talked about it loads of times. That was yesterday's high as well. Um, and I just wanted to just get involved only when it was looking the best. My first long was when I we pushed up here and just held above that high. The whole situation was fine for me then. We tested here, sucked in a few shorts. We'd held above the high here. You know, we then pushed up above that break high. We a little tiny pause is purely tape type situation where you've got some volume spike coming in. It's looking good. And then I've got an obvious target of the 104. It's going to be an okay scalp. It, it, it makes like sense to me to take that sort of trade. So take it, and I'm out as we approach and we break through that 104. Uh, just scaling out as we. I thought we might get a little bit more in that first push, but we didn't. So I'm all out and I'm looking at it. And then a second opportunity came when we're just holding above the 104. You know, I talk about that a lot. Where if you push and you hold above or below the resistance level, the likelihood is the next level, the next move is going to be back in the trend. And actually, this time the 20 period guided me quite nicely. 
um, we came and we we tagged it. And I was a little bit early. I was jumped the gun very slightly with it, but it was okay because the risk was quantified. It wasn't a lot of risk. I thought it, this will be my last trade in this sequence of taking longs on the US dollar yen, just looking for a further push up. And we got it. We didn't get much. I didn't hold it, hold it for long. And that tail really sort of looked pretty bad on the tape. So I ended up just scalping it out on there. So um, first trade, awful. Um, second trade good, third trade good, so that's not too bad. But very quickly, guys, you know, obviously the U, uh, the FTSE is the one to watch um, going into Monday if it manages to hold this. Now, it's the biggest day we've had for a long time. It's the biggest daily move since the Brexit. It's got decent volume on it. We've done that classical little bull flag type situation where you get a little downtrend against the trend and we break back up. So it's all very technical and nice. The, so, and Monday, of course, is Labor Day, but the hazard to watch out for is this Dow. Uh, if it reverses today and doesn't close on highs, then that's really going to be interesting because it's just doing it now, but we'll see. Is Labor Day. Maybe the, the Americans are going to go home early, but I'm just definitely watching that low. If we close anywhere in the middle, then that's probably neutral. If we start to close under that, then that FTSE, I need to be careful of that on Monday. If we close near the highs, then follow through for the FTSE on Monday is probably the right sort of play to make. But loads of stuff going on. Uh, US dollar yen obviously in play, uh, DAX in play. But uh, uh, you know, I think that uh, I just want to share with you about that mistake, the early mistake and just not letting it get to you and just refocusing, uh, reassessing the situation and getting straight back into it. So I hope you guys had a good uh, non-farm payroll trading session. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday.